We're now going to look at how we can calculate the work done on an object. So when an object speeds up, work is being done on the object to increase its kinetic energy. If an object slows down, then work is being done by the object, or we can say negative work is being done on the object in order to slow it down. So work is a method of transferring kinetic energy away from an object. So let's come up with an expression to describe work now. So let's imagine this situation where I'm pulling on a box with some mass m, with some force f, at an angle to the horizontal, and the box is moving in the horizontal direction. And I want to calculate the work done on this box. Now we can split this force into two components, an x component and a y component. And if we take the angle with the horizontal as theta, then the x component is given by f cos theta, and the y component is given by f sine theta. Now, we can use Newton's laws and our kinematic equations to work out the change in kinetic energy of the box. So, Newton's second law tells us, well, in this case, the box is only accelerating in the x direction, the horizontal direction. So, the mass times the acceleration in the x direction must be equal to the x component of this force, as that is my only force acting in the horizontal direction. So we've got mAx is equal to fx, which we said before was equal to f cos theta. Now, considering our kinematic equations, we've got the equation v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. So I can rearrange this and write it as v squared minus u squared is equal to 2as. And in this case, a is in the x direction, so we can give it a little subscript x. And the displacement of the box was also in the x direction, so we can give our displacement a little subscript x as well. Now, changing kinetic energy is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So remember that change can de be denoted with a capital delta. And whenever we're calculating the change in something, we always do the final value minus the initial value. So the change in kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. The final kinetic energy is a half mv squared, where v is the final velocity. And the initial kinetic energy is a half mu squared, where u is the initial velocity. So we can take a half m out as a common factor. So this equation becomes, this is equal to a half m times open brackets, v squared minus u squared, close brackets. Now, we've already seen from our kinematic equations that in the case of constant acceleration, which is what happens if I apply a constant force here, then v squared minus u squared is equal to 2as. So we can replace that v squared minus u squared with 2a subscript x, s subscript x. So I've now got a half m times 2as, and so this is equal to m times ax times sx, m times ax is just fx, it's just the force in the x direction. So what I end up with is fx times sx, and fx, that's just the force, the x component of the force, this one, which was equal to f cos theta. So I end up with a change in kinetic energy being fs cos theta, where s is the total displacement, and f is the magnitude of the force applied, and cos theta is the angle between the displacement, which is horizontal in this case, and the force. Now, this change in kinetic energy is achieved through work being done on the body. So the change in kinetic energy is equal to the work done. So the work done is given by Fs cos theta, which we saw dot products when we have two vectors a and b with an angle theta between them, then a dot b is equal to ab cos theta. So in this case, we can write the work done on the body as f dot s. Now the units for work are the units of force times the units of distance, so newtons times meters, which is equivalent to joules. Now, one thing to be perfectly clear about, because it's slightly different to the everyday meaning, is 
work only happens if a body is displaced. So if I push really hard against a wall and it doesn't move, I get exhausted, but I'm not doing work in the sense that we mean in physics as there is no displacement to the wall. I'm just not strong enough. So work only occurs when we have a force and a displacement which are acting in the same direction. So let's have a look at an example of how to calculate work for a situation now. So a problem to try, a box with a mass of 10.0 kilograms is pushed across a surface with a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.30. What work is done on the box as it comes to rest from an initial speed of 3 meters per second? Okay, so a good way to start all questions is to draw a little diagram. So here's our box. It's got some speed this way and it's got a frictional force acting on it to slow it down. So the frictional force is acting in the opposite direction to the velocity. So it's acting this way. And what we want to do is calculate the work and we want to practice using our equation. So we're going to use F dot S in order to solve this problem. So what we're going to need to do is calculate the force and we're going to need to calculate the displacement. Okay, so in this case, the only force which is acting in the same direction as the displacement is the frictional force. Okay, we do have a weight force downwards, which is balanced by the normal force upwards, but because they're balanced, there's no acceleration that way. It had no initial velocity that way, so it's not moving in that direction. So we have F is equal to ma and the only force is this frictional force so the frictional force is given by mu k times n where n is the normal force and as we've said the normal force balances the weight force so this is equal to mu k mg so we've now got ma is equal to mu k mg so we can say well a is equal to mu k g. And we have an expression for force, which is one of the things that we need. The other thing we need is an expression for our displacement. So in order to calculate how far it goes, we're going to need to make use of our kinematic equations. So we can actually use the equation v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. S is what we want to find. We know that it comes to rest. So the final velocity v is equal to zero. And we're given u is equal to 3 meters per second in the question. So we can rearrange our kinematic equation here to have, well, s is equal to minus u squared over 2a, which is equal to, now we found a up here, so we're just going to substitute it in. So this is minus u squared over 2 mu k g. So now we have F, we have S, and so we can use, well, work is equal to F, S, cos theta. This is just using this. In this case, the frictional force and the displacement are parallel to each other. So this is F, S, cos 0. Cos of 0 is 1, so this is just F, S. So we can substitute in F is mu k m g. S is minus u squared over 2 mu k g. Now mu k cancels out, g cancels out, and I have this is equal to minus m u squared on 2, which I can also write as this is equal to minus a half m u squared. We shouldn't actually surprise us too much because when we were deriving this expression for work, we said that the work done was equal to the change in kinetic energy. And what this is here is this is the amount of kinetic energy it's lost because it ends up with zero kinetic energy. So this is how much it's lost. So that was really what we were expecting. And if we'd realized at the start that that was what we were expecting, using that fact would have been a faster way to solve this problem than to go through and work out what the force and the displacement were. But now we've got this equation, let's substitute in our values. So we've got minus a half times 10 times 3 squared. So when we solve this, we get minus 45.0 joules. 
and it's a scalar, so we don't need to give a direction. The negative sign indicates that this is energy lost, not energy gained. So what we've just been using has a name, it's called the work kinetic energy formula. And how we can write it is that the change in kinetic energy, which is given by the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, is equal to the work done. Or we can rearrange this to get that the final kinetic energy is equal to the initial kinetic energy plus the work done on the object. Now if the work's done by the object, which means negative work is done on the object, then it means that the final kinetic energy will be less than the initial kinetic energy. If the work is done on the object, so positive work is done on the object, then the kinetic energy of the body increases. Now in this equation here, the work done is the net work done. So if we want to calculate the net work done, bit of a pun there, the net work done is equal to the dot product of the net force with the displacement of the body. So the, to calculate the net force, we've seen how to do that. We just need to sum all the forces acting on the system. The other way to calculate the network, which works equally well, so just choose whatever is easiest for the given situation, is to say, well, the network done is just equal to the sum of each of the f dot ds's for each of the different forces which is acting on the body.